Good morning, everyone. It's quite remarkable to see this many people at the first lecture of the day, so I congratulate you for getting up, especially after this uh, long conference. Um, sports hernia is a confusing topic, uh, not only to orthopedists and, and physical therapists and athletic trainers, but more importantly also for surgeons. It's been a hotly debated topic um, at the American Hernia Society meetings every year. We have a, a spirited discussion about this and I've learned one thing after repeatedly asking the experts to come and speak uh, at the meeting uh, that they all have a different idea as to what the problem really is and some of their solutions are quite bizarre. And the takeaway from that is that when everyone has a different answer, no one really has the right answer, or at least the, the right answer eludes a lot of people. So hopefully that uh, after today's talk, we'll have a little bit better understanding of what we do know about sports hernias and, and how uh, we can treat them. So to begin the discussion, you have to go back to November of 2005. Uh, most of you remember Donovan McNabb, who was the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And on that night, Monday Night Football, leading the Dallas Cowboys 20 to 14 late in the fourth quarter, Donovan McNabb was in for a surprise. So McNabb takes the snap, throws right into the hands of the safety, and the linebacker clobbers McNabb, and the Cowboys go on to win 21 to 20. That was the last snap for McNabb that season. He'd been plagued by a groin injury all season long and ended up seeing a doctor in Philadelphia by the name of William Myers who then later performed a sports hernia repair on him. And everyone was asking, what the hell is a sports hernia? Uh, I was too. I'd, I'm a hernia surgeon, have been for 30 years, and I'd never heard of a sports hernia. So it's important to recognize that this is a controversial debate among hernia surgeons. Um, because identifying the true pathology is the real crux of the issue, and so that we can know really how to repair this and what we can expect uh, for these patients. It's frustrating for everybody, uh, both physically for the players and in some cases economically for the owners and, uh, and management. So it's, it's difficult uh, to do this and we, 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 pre we press on. What we do know about sports hernias now is that it is rarely involving a true hernia. A true hernia is a tear in the wall of the abdominal cavity through which viscera or other tissues protrude through. And if you go in and repair the defect with sutures or mesh, typically that solves the problem. But in the sports hernia, um, that's a hernia is not present. It's really obviously a musculoskeletal injury and it still is confusing to a lot of surgeons. A lot of surgeons come up to me and say, what, what is a sports hernia? Is it BS? What's going on? So they don't even know what it is. So it's a lot of misinformation about it um, because it's a misnomer. It really should be properly termed athletic pubalgia, but that's not a very sexy term and no one will remember that. So the sports hernia stuck and that's what we're left with. But it's a broad differential diagnosis. The most important thing that we have to do as physicians is rule out hip pathology or other causes for the pain and not just jump to the conclusion that uh, sports hernia is the problem. Uh, physical examination findings can be all over the map uh, from obvious uh, bloody ecchymoses underneath the skin, uh, which demonstrates a uh, complete avulsion of the muscles, uh, or it could be very subtle. Uh, with no, no findings even on MRI to point to the diagnosis. Um, but MRI has been emerged as the uh, diagnostic imaging uh, of choice for these patients. 
So the anatomy uh, of this area is the, um, let's see if I can figure out how to work this pointer. So we have the, the rectus abdominis muscles and the oblique muscles coming together as they uh, transition to the aponeurosis uh, and inserting into the rectus, uh, into the uh, symphysis pubis. And on the other side of the symphysis pubis, we have the adductor compartment. And this is a little confusing. And the majority of these injuries, all, all three can be, uh, and other muscles in this area can be involved, but majority is the adductor longus as it originates from the pubis. So this muscular uh, tug of war is going on right across this bone, and uh, the forces come in up direction and down direction, and this causes a great deal of tension on that. And these injuries can exist in combination with one another. Uh, the rectus abdominis can be part of the problem, uh, adductor longus, isolated injuries, or in various combinations. And Dr. Myers has described some 17 different injuries uh, which can be present in these athletes. Sometimes it's obvious what the problem is. Other times it's not so obvious. So if you think of this in terms of a uh, muscular skeletal injury, which it is, we've got the muscular forces pulling in opposite directions and this tug of war causes the rectus abdominis muscles to be lifting the pelvis anteriorly and the adductor longus is using the fulcrum of the pelvis to draw the femur medially and so these forces going in different directions uh, can cause the periosteum actually to lift off the bone or the tendons, uh, the muscles can tear. So this is an injury that exists in lots of different variations. Uh, it produces intense pain with subsequent similar stress, and some players actually play through this in the early stages and continually make it worse and worse and worse, and finally they just have to, have to own up to the fact that they're hurt and, and seek medical attention. And they have tremendous point tenderness at the point of either the rectus insertion or the adductor compartment uh, origin. If you think of it in terms of a soccer player, this kind of demonstrates the, the uh, upward lifting motion of the rectus abdominis muscle and the medialization of the, uh, the femur. And right at this point of injury is, is where they develop the majority of their pain. So it's thought that this is a result of either rapid acceleration, rapid deceleration, or sudden changes in direction or combination of both. Uh, insufficient off-season training can lead to this injury, uh, imbalance of uh, abdominal and uh, adductor compartment, um, or previous groin strain, as in the, place, in the case of Donovan McNabb had, had previous groin injury, which went untreated. Uh, that's a common problem. And it's been said that, and I don't know much about this strength ratio, but it's said that the adductor to abductor strength ratio of less than 80% increases the risk 17 times in these patients. Now, you all know more about that than I do, but uh, it's really been, uh, the research that's been going on on this is, is trying to establish whether or not there's a, a relationship between the imbalance of these two muscle groups um, uh, as leading to the uh, source of the injury. Uh, adductor strengthening can greatly reduce the risk of injury and it seems, at least in my practice, that defensive backs and running backs are especially at risk because these are the players that uh, demonstrate these motions, rapid acceleration, rapid deceleration, most often. Uh, it's not common for a lineman to get this injury, although it's possible. Um, but uh, these defensive backs and running backs are the ones who are really uh, at risk. And finally, uh, veteran player status has been recognized as uh, a cause in some cases. So the evaluation of groin injury obviously begins with a history and physical, and we get the MRI to rule in or rule out a diagnosis. Interestingly, um, I've treated a number of patients who actually have a, an MRI which does not indicate any problems either at the adductor or at the uh, rectus abdominis insertion, and, but they have true classic physical findings of an injury at that location. We go on to repair them anyway, even though the MRI is negative. Uh, and they, they do uh, have 
uh, good results. Uh, but it's important to rule out other causes of groin pain, uh, pelvic stress fractures and dislocations, osteitis pubis, uh, hip pathology is present in 15% of patients who have a concomitant um, sports hernia. So these, these types of injuries can go hand in hand and simultaneously with one another, such as labral tears, osteo, um, osteoitis, osteoarthritis, and femoral acetabular impingement syndrome. Um, but it becomes a diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, we have to evaluate all these diagnostic modalities and physical findings and come up with a, a diagnosis, uh, often in times uh, in conjunction with the orthopedic surgeons. In fact, the, the number one refer, uh, type of referrer to my practice are hip surgeons who have treated labral tears and other hip pathology, and the patient still has pain, and then they send them to me, and we determine that the sports hernia was part of the constellation of injury all along. Now, some cases are obvious, as I mentioned before. Um, if you get an avulsion of the rectus abdominis muscle, you can get ecchymosis all over the skin. It's pretty obvious what this, this guy has, uh, avulsion of the rectus abdominis muscle from the pubis. Um, in terms of physical examination, it's not a very uh, uh, exhaustive type of exam. Uh, resisted uh, flexion of the pelvis or um, rectus abdominis muscle typically uh, causes point tenderness, excuse me, point tenderness uh, at the pubic area here, and, uh, you know, certain leg lifts and other things can uh, point to this situation. We also obviously do extensive hip examination to make sure that it's not a hip problem in the first place, uh, and also to get further information about the adductors. It's important to to uh, manipulate the hip so that you can evaluate the origin of the adductor compartment. And then finally, the squeeze test is really valuable to evaluate the adductors um, uh, and in some cases determine bilaterality um, of this problem. So the hip is probably the most common uh, issue that we have to discern this um, uh, sports hernia issue with. Uh, the pelvis and other areas, osteitis pubis, can be uh, present in some patients. Typically, these are the uh, weekend warriors rather than the professional athletes because this is something that doesn't often occur in professional athletes. Um, but the MRI is, again, the, the, the crucial and the, the go-to examination. Um, if we imagine uh, the rectus abdominis tendon inserting into the pubic bone here and the adductor longus originating from the same bone on this side. You can see normal anatomy and the rectus abdominis muscle here uh, and the insertion lights up on the MRI indicating uh, pathology in that insertion. Again, uh, MRI showing some uh, uh, hypertroph uh, hypertrophic injury uh, in the uh, subcortical bone, uh, points to uh, more of an osteitis pubis situation here. Um, on the patient's right in this picture, we see a normal right rectus abdominis insertion, but on the left, on the patient's left, we see edema and um, uh, hyperintensity of the signal and some uh, changes in the uh, uh, symphysis pubis on the left side. And finally, the adductor compartment lights up on this patient who had a, a solitary uh, adductor strain without any rectus involvement. So the treatment of sports hernia. It is more of a team approach than I have ever uh, experienced. Uh, you know, it's not common that surgeons have to rely on other specialists uh, to determine what's going on, but there's no question in this situation, it definitely does require a team approach, including a sports medicine, orthopedist, radiologist, uh, physical therapist, athletic trainers, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then ultimately, an experienced surgeon obviously is, is needed. You need someone who knows this process and more importantly knows uh, a, a way to get good results and do the proper operation. So it's really not a hernia repair in the first place. It's a groin stabilization procedure. 
And there have been many authors who have uh, published on this subject. Uh, Muskowick in Munich, Germany, uh, talks about the minimal repair that she does. Uh, she basically does exclusively uh, sports injuries. And she puts two rows of suture in the floor of the inguinal canal and claims to get 75% return to sport in two to four weeks. Uh, Michael Braun at Washington University in St. Louis uh, published his study uh, or his trial, and he prefers a mesh repair, uh, either laparoscopically placing posterior to the rectus abdominis muscle or anterior uh, placing it on the anterior surface of the rectus abdominis muscle. Uh, the problem with the laparoscopic approach is you can't do anything about the adductor compartment because that's not uh, accessible through a laparoscopic approach. But Dr. Braun also reports uh, uh, five to eight week rehab, getting uh, patients back to, to sport in a large percentage. And finally, William Myers of Philadelphia, who's the guy who's um, uh, the household word, if you will, in sports hernias. Um, I've had occasion to see a number of his uh, athletes after surgery for either a failed hernia repair or a recurrent hernia. Uh, typically, they come to me when they're basically uh, out of the league uh, due to this chronic injury um, because most of the NFL teams send uh, the patients to Dr. Myers as a, as a uh, first solution. But I've had occasion to read many of his operative reports, um, and he uses only suture. Uh, he's not putting any mesh in this. Um, and he uses a four- to eight-week rehab program, and... Uh, has similar results to everyone else. So these many proposals, uh, and some of them I haven't uh, uh, detailed for you here, some of them are might quite bizarre, like uh, cutting the inguinal ligament clean in half and calling that a, a repair. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but the real objectives should be the reattachment of the, of the avulsions. And some of the avulsions are visible and some of them are not visible. Uh, kind of microevulsions, if you will, the tendon. Um, it rarely happens to the adductors, but in many, many cases we do have to reattach the uh, avulsion of the, um, the adductor compartment. In some cases, release the adductors if they're not uh, torn, but uh, over the uh, course of time, the imbalance of the muscles in this area causes... Um, uh, tension on the adductors, and if we release these, do a partial release of the adductors, uh, and then reinforce this with mesh to stimulate inflammatory response, uh, they tend to get a very good result. Uh, and then finally, as I mentioned, the, the, the use of mesh, I believe that mesh is, is very important uh, to uh, repair these because at the end of the day, what we're doing is creating an inflammatory response, and mesh is known to create an intense inflammatory response, which brings in uh, uh, inflammatory mediators, stem cells, and so on and so forth, which aid in the, in the healing process. The mesh that I use is called the ultra-pro hernia system. Uh, it employs an anterior mesh in the anterior compartment and a circular mesh in the posterior compartment. Uh, what we're doing is we're performing an anterior mesh reinforcement of the rectus and the adductor compartment and performing a posterior reinforcement of the rectus as it inserts into the pubic bone. Here again, just kind of illustrating the rectus and adductor longus with the anterior mesh repair and a posterior mesh at the conclusion of the procedure. And this is kind of a three-dimensional uh, representation of what we hope to achieve. So rehab, and I'm quickly running out of time. I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. Um, the goal is to get the player back to, to sport in four to six weeks. Elite athletes can usually get back sooner because of their conditioning is, is better. Um, athletes are under great pressure to get back to the field of play, <clears throat> both uh, from themselves and, and from their coaches and so on. Um, but you have to allow the, the player to heal. And players, coaches, management, owners uh, have to be patient or they risk re-injury to these patients. Uh, and many of these re-injuries can be career-ending. So it's, it's important that they not be put back uh, in play uh, too soon. And uh, I just want to uh, have a little shout-out to David Gamble. Where is David? 
David, thank you for your assistance in putting this together. It's been uh, a great pleasure working with you all these years, and uh, David was uh, instrumental in getting me a lot of these pictures uh, to show to you today. So the, the essentials of rehab are discipline, methodical progression, uh, as tolerated, core abdominal strengthening and stabilization, lower body adductor balancing. Uh, we start them walking, light jogging, stationary bike, uh, no specific work, uh, position specific workouts until week three. Uh, typically requires uh, four to six weeks. Um, if I can just uh, conclude these last few slides. Um, to give you a little more detail on the, the four weeks of rehab, Stationary bike, treadmill, limited uh, uh, idea is to limit the control of hip uh, extension. No rectus abdominis work or adductor work in the first week. And we start with isometric TA holds with pelvic in neutral position uh, and pelvic tilts. And then we begin also some uh, straight leg raises uh, in both the adducted and abductor uh, position. Week two, add ball squeeze single leg balance, lateral slides, monster walks, so on and so forth, general stretching and pool workouts to about 50% of uh, capacity. Um, we continue to, on week three, add in uh, resistance bands to the monster walks, some wall sits, uh, lunges in all directions, and increase their uh, pool workouts. And finally, in week four and the weeks beyond, we progress to uh, non-contact drills, um, progression to sprint, change of direction, um, and full activity as tolerated. So to summarize, uh, Myers has got the largest reported series, over 5,000 operations. Uh, his uh, procedure uh, it costs $17,000, he accepts cash only. A good gig if you can get it. Um, and he does about 15 to 20 operations per week. Um, it's an inguinal floored sutured repair, no mesh. And he describes an attachment and realignment of the rectus abdominis muscles and adductor release in uh, most patients. Skipping ahead. Uh, in our results, uh, unpublished study uh, now approaching 300 cases, we do a sutured repair with mesh reinforcement as I described. And typically, we get 98% um, return to support at, at eight weeks, 93% at four weeks. So the conclusions are that athletic pubalgia is really the term, not sports hernia, but that's what we're stuck with, so it's too late. Uh, groin injuries in athletes is a common and complex problem uh, and one that does require a team approach. Diagnosis can be challenging, must exclude other causes, uh, and truly is uh, still remains to be a highly misunderstood uh, condition and uh, repair technique uh, among general surgeons. And then finally, discipline rehab is essential. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I went over time. <laughs>